this video, we're going to talk about dealing with low light situations because they can be very, very frustrating um, and end up in underexposed photos or blurred motion or a whole host of problems, problems, problems focusing, all kinds of things. So here are some possible solutions. All right. So sometimes in low light solutions, I mean, low light situations, you may have noticed this. There's not enough light and you get blurry, noisy, and dark images. They're blurry from too long of a shutter speed. They're noisy, so you all these speckles from too high an ISO, or they're dark overall from being underexposed. So what do you have to do? You either have to add light or you gotta change your camera settings. So let's talk about some of these solutions. Cameras love light. When there's a good amount of light, cameras focus better. They produce sharper images. They aver avoid motion blur. They avoid all that speckly noise. Uh, if there's good uh, color temperature, white balance, daylight light, then you have the proper white balance and you have the proper exposure. It's not too light, it's not too dark, it's just right. So what are some of the things you can do? Well, if there's not enough light in a situation, add more natural light. Move, if you're taking a picture of someone or something, move it to a sunnier location or get closer to a window. We see this here. Or maybe use a reflector. If there's not enough light, then wherever light is hitting, if it's hitting more down on the ground or to the side or something, channel that light, capture that light, and bounce it onto whatever you're taking a photo of. Uh, you can buy reflectors. You can even buy a good small one that has a white side and maybe a gold or silver side for about 34 bucks. But you can also just use a piece of foam core. Just a piece of white foam core works as well. And that's just like 2 or $3. You can add artificial light to the situation. So you can use professional studio lights or cheap DIY lights. There's like these cheap ones that you can get at Home Depot or you can get fancier ones. Um, there's all different kinds of professional lights. Uh, you can use flashes or strobes, so those just go off. There's continuous lights that are tungsten or other things that are called hot lights. Or you can get continuous lights, that means they're always on. You can get LED lights now, which are really nice because you can control the color temperature a little bit better and they don't get so hot. I mean, literally the temperature, like so they're, when they're shining on someone, it's not uncomfortable for that person. Um, or, like I said, you can just do cheap DIY. You can even buy LED light bulbs and use it with these clamp lights. So you can use a flash. So if you use the direct flash, it's on your camera. So there might be a flash that's attached to your camera, or you're using a supplemental flash that attaches to the hot shoe on your camera. If you have a direct flash, it generally looks pretty harsh. Um, but you can diffuse your flash. So even tissue paper or wax paper or something like that, if you put it over your flash, it's just going to soften out that light a little. Just like clouds diffuse the light, soften the light from the sun, um, kind of milky white materials can soften the light from a flash before it hits whatever you're photographing. Okay. So those were two things that you could do, not with your camera, but outside of your camera by adding in more light to the situation. But these are some solutions that you can do with your camera. So you can avoid blurry photos with a faster shutter speed. So if you have a faster shutter speed, you're actually letting in less light with your shutter. So you have to open up your aperture to let in more light. You need to have that bigger hole in the lens to let in more light. That's going to make it more shallow depth of field, but you know, that's okay in a lot of situations. You also might have to choose a higher ISO to make your camera more sensitive to light, but it may add more noise, that speckliness. It probably will add in more noise, but it will allow you to um, have a faster shutter speed. Or, as we mentioned before, you can add more light to the situation. And if it's an image where nothing's moving to begin with, you can use a tripod to hold the camera completely still. Then you can have a really long 
shutter speed, let in tons of light, and it doesn't matter because you're just not dealing with motion. So you're not gonna have blurred motion or frozen motion when something's not moving, right? Another thing you can do um, if your problem is noisy photos um, is lower your ISO. So you can lower your ISO. So you have this really noisy image. You have this really noisy image. Um, you can lower your ISO. However, if you lower your ISO, your camera's less sensitive to light. So you gotta get more light into your camera somehow. So either let in more light with a longer shutter or a more open aperture or add more light to the situation. So you gotta get more light in there. You can use your spot meter. So we have a whole video that's talking all about different um, ways of metering um, and that's judging how much light there is in a scene. Uh, just real quick, your camera can either judge how much light there is in the entire scene. So here it's really bright, here it's really dark, here it's in the middle, and it averages out like if it was in full frame. Center weighted, it would just look at this area, or spot might work the best for you. Um, so if most of the frame is really dark and there's only light on one part of the subject, use the spot meter and judge how much light there is here. And that might change the amount of light that your camera um, is okay with accepting um, with a certain combination of shutter speed and aperture. So that might work out for you a little bit better than having that full frame, it's called a valuative or matrix, um, where it's trying to judge. See, you would see this as a really dark picture, but you actually don't care if it's dark here or if it's dark here. You're not trying to lighten that up. You really only care about this area. So you would meter in just that area. Um, you could also just embrace the low light. Just say like, hey, I'm gonna go with it, but I do realize that that means I'm probably gonna have to work with a silhouette or something. So if you have a light source behind your subject, and so your subjects are very dark, you just go with it. Um, you meter on the sky in the background because there is actually a lot of light there. So you press that button down halfway in meter. And then um, you can uh, wait until your subject is how you want it to be. These people jumped and then you press the button down all the way and uh, your picture will end up something like this with some silhouettes. So those are all ways that you can um, deal with low light situations. So again, real quick, bring in more light, natural or artificial. Um, you can use a faster shutter speed to avoid that blur, but then you gotta let in light other ways. You can have a lower ISO, but then you have to let in more light other ways. Or you can meter differently. Or you can just say like, hey, I'm just gonna go, oh, this is really annoying. I'm just going to go with the uh, low light. I'm just gonna go for amazing silhouettes instead of being able to get the proper exposure on my subjects. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help.